place where one should feel good about themselves. A place where one should feel like they belong. It's a place where one should feel safe. And yet, those are things that I was missing when I was growing up in my dear little mountain village, Unken. A place that I've left, but I've decided to come back now to make it a new home in my heart. When you go to the countryside, you know, there's a saying that in the countryside, the clocks, you got to turn it back to like 50 years compared to anywhere else. And I felt that. I felt that when people gave me those certain looks, when people, you know, talked in some weird ways about me, when people called me a faggot, and when people threatened me for being who I am. And this experiencing as a young, young child makes you definitely feel unwelcome in your very own home. And even if the people were not openly opposed to me, there were still those rumors. Rumors that made sure people would not be sure about, what should I think about that guy? You know, he's a kid, but what should I really think? Like, you have, you've been hearing this and that and this and that. And this uncertainty creates more and more of a feeling that you definitely don't belong. It makes it so you're lonely, very lonely, in this invisible wall within your own community. And growing up there, then I didn't really feel like I would have anyone to talk to, to talk to about how I felt, ask for advice, or even simply exchange about ideas and see what is life about. No, those things were not there. And it surely felt like unwelcomeness for me. Now, what does all of this do to a young mind, which is just still figuring things out in life? Definitely not the nicest things, you could say. There are sure are a lot nicer things, but this idea, when you grow up in such an environment of, as a boy, you're gonna have a girlfriend. As a girl, you're gonna have a boyfriend, because this is the way the right way, the good way, the way that you should follow. And what do you do, though, if you stray from that path? What do you do in the end if you don't find yourselves in this binary place? And how do you move forward when it comes to feeling like you belong? Because where do you fit in in the end? Even, or question yourself, do I even fit in anywhere now? So you find yourself in an environment that overall perpetually just reinforces that one idea. Yes, here's the right way with boy or girl. But you are left out. Left out directly and indirectly. There are two famous proverbs which resonated with me for a long time. And I think a combination of those two proverbs perfectly capture how I felt as a child. It takes a village to raise a child. But what do you do if the village doesn't want to raise that child? The child who is not embraced by the village will burn it down to feel its warmth. Now, I didn't burn down my village. No. <laughs> it's still there on Google Maps, promised, still there. But I became set on burning down its homophobia and to make sure that there is a space and a chance for equality and queer people to finally thrive there as well. So, you see, I've had the opportunity to leave. I left. I stepped out. I saw the world. I got to know the world. I found love from people who appreciate me for who I was and saw environments and worlds with less prejudice. So this motivated me to actually step back. Through there, I got the conviction to come back to that place and face the fears. Because I wanted to make sure that there is now an environment that I've never had as a child. An environment of openness, support and love for its queer people. See, I've had the privilege of going away. But what about all of those others who are still there? 
in my 2,000 people village, I personally know around 30 people who find themselves on the LGBT spectrum. 30. Out of those 30, there are three, including me, who are openly queer. For all those other ones, there are various reasons why they actually not show it. They are often either afraid, but also coming out sometimes seems impossible. Coming out to people around you, but also coming out to yourself. So they are scared to become the one. The one who's ostracized by their local community. The one who's known now as the gay one. Because the entire social identity suddenly shifts to that one thing, even though they've been such a deep person all along and all that. Suddenly now, this is the one thing that would make them a part of that society. And no, there's so much more still. But this fear and this no, not having a chance to open up yourself without becoming that one, it holds people back. And I hope that there's a chance to help them exactly with that, with being more open. Because in the end, if you put that mark on the back of your back, you become a target. And suddenly you might easily find yourself on the margins of your community or even on the margins of your world. People don't find themselves on the margins of society. It's people who put margins up for others. And I repeat this because it is so important to keep that in mind. People don't just find them on the margins of society. It's people who create margins for others. And I'm confident that we overall, we as a community have the power to take those margins away, to make sure that queerness, diversity, love has a place everywhere. But what does it take to achieve that? What do we really need to get there? I say respect. An observation that I've made in my work as an activist was that in order to gain respect, one important feature is getting a common ground, getting on the same basis of an understanding what we are all actually talking about. Now, sometimes people come up to me and go like, Hi, Florian. I respect so much your decision to be gay. Like, ah. Yeah. Um, and I thank, thanks, but there's this discrepancy you can find there of understanding. This discrepancy of understanding what queerness and queer life is actually about and what the actual circumstances are. And overcoming those discrepancies of understanding is where suddenly you forge those connections of understanding. It's suddenly where you plant the seeds for equality and common discourse. Now, there's also a whole other issues as well. For example, sexualizing things. Queerness has been sexualized. Sexuality suddenly is about sex. Love is about sex. We, the people, suddenly become the sexual objects in that discourse. And as long as it all just seems to be about sex, where then narratives about protecting children suddenly take their roots, we're not going to move forward with our inches. We need to make sure that such discrepancies and such narratives are broken down and that we resolve exactly these miscommunications. Because sexuality is not about sex. Queerness is not about sex. And we all know that it is about so much more, it, that it is about the human experience. So we create it and overcome all of that through respect and visibility. In 2021, I was back at home in, during my summer break and thought, what could I do in that their village of mine to make it at least a little bit better for myself, but also for all the other queer people that I know but don't know of. So I thought, how about we put a, pr a pride flag somewhere? Somewhere where it's seen, somewhere where people talk about the topic and really thi start thinking about it. So I looked around and saw there's a big church in my village, a very big Catholic church. So. I talked to the priest. I went up and was, hey, could this be something that we can do? 
And to mine and everyone's surprise, he said, yes, I don't know today, but no, he said, he said, yes. And this led to the amazing moment of us putting up a pride flag on top of that church tower, which then was seen from the entire village. So is now being queer and having career visibility in the countryside safe and okay? Yes and no. Because this wonderful bright flag was also cut down just a few days after it was put up. We don't know by whom, but that act naturally was a symbol as well. So for us it was clear we cannot stop there. We could never just stay here and have this as the baseline for what queer visibility and queerness in the countryside has come to. No. We organized a pride parade. We thought you could down one flag, we make sure to come back with a hundred. And so we did. When we had the very first Unkin Pride in that very year, and it was amazing. People from all around the country and even beyond came. In a 2,000 people village, suddenly you had around 200 people on the streets to stand for equality, to stand for love, and stand for love for each other. It has been a moment that was so impactful myself, but even more impactful than I ever thought for other people. And this memory of walking down the streets of my childhood with a pride parade behind me, the loud music, the happy people, it has been something that is the stuff of dreams for me and for many others in the region. And this stuff of dreams, seeing that this seemingly impossible thing was possible and still is now, this motivated me and so many others to also do more and be active and show that there is this space for us, even though others try to make us feel unwelcome. Because, well, after all, it's Onken. But Onken, in that sense, has become somewhat of a beacon of hope. A small one, but one nevertheless. And since then now, people in the community in Austria, also beyond, learn about the Unken Pride, learn about the story. And we now, as an organization, Heublumen LGBTQI Plus Initiative, we now do our best to help exactly in the countryside, to see where our communities, to see what can be done, to see where queerness actually hasn't found its space yet, but where we can make sure that it is well damn definitely there. And if you take anything away now from my talk here, I want you to think that even if so many things seem impossible to achieve in the most impossible places, it still can be done. Because we've put up a pride flag in Onken. We've had a pride parade in Onken. So I'm sure that you all in the room also have the potential to achieve greatness. Because the actions of so many who came before me inspired me to do the very thing I did. So I hope that some inspiration can also be found in there for you. So that one day, so that one day, all those other villagers also learn to raise and love their children with embrace, no matter who they love. Thank you very much. <laughs>